The world of consumer sports brands usually targets the young, the trendy, and upwardly mobile. But as it turns out, that isn't the only opportunity. Meet the Mamil, also known as middle-aged men in Lycra. Though once seen as just a niche group of avid cyclists, more lifestyle marketeers are now paying attention to them to find out how they can address this growing demographic and their needs. Normal pace, the fast one, please go ahead, second one, third and fourth together, whatever. Okay. Safety, yeah? The Mamil, middle-aged man in Lycra, was a term coined in 2010 by Michael Oliver of Mintel, a marketing research firm. Who are the Mamils? They're successful men in their mid-30s to 60s with money to spend often comprising of C-suite executives, business owners and professionals, their purchasing power allows them to buy high-end bikes costing up to thousands of dollars. While the concept started in the West, mammals are coursing through the roads of the Asia-Pacific too. In 2017, the APAC region's bike revenues grew by 25% and are estimated to reach 25 billion US dollars by 2025, comprising a third of global projection. Specifically, in Singapore and India, retailers have reported a 15 to 25% increase in premium bike sales over the last five years, with mammals making up a significant number of buyers. My observation, they tend to be a lot of doctors. We have a lot of lawyers. We have a lot of architects, engineers people who are in the financial institution, private bankers and all, who forms the group of mammals in Singapore. Singaporean mammals spend anywhere from 5,000 to 14,000 US dollars on their favourite riding machine. With superior performance, design and build quality, premium bikes are often lighter, more durable and made from high-grade carbon fibre. Technology 3 Group, Singapore's biggest cycling retailer and distributor, estimates that mammals make up 40% of their customer base. In terms of how we market our product, we definitely have the mammals in mind. We generally always promote the mid to high end sort of range, as this resonates uh, well with them. These are people who are able to afford this sort of stuff. And also with colours, that has also um, affected how we stock our stores with the colours that the mammal wants. Matte black is the colour that sells out so quickly because it's a colour that is highly sought after by the mammal demographic. Visual is everything. When someone goes online and sees someone riding a bike, it's only natural for them to aspire to have that sort of lifestyle. And this is it's just a natural and a very organic progression for them to come into the store to get a bike as well. Mammals can be found everywhere in Asia. Bangalore, the tech capital of India, is fast becoming a cycling hub too. Satish Adanki oversees his family's water filter business. Being semi-retired these days, he has more time on his hands to spend with family and his real passion. Cycling is now uh, my uh, heart and soul now, after my family. I don't mind going the full hog in getting the best stuff I can afford to make my uh, cycling a much enjoyable and comfortable habit or passion. I have invested from head to toe. I have a couple of helmets, uh, and then uh, I, I have also uh, a lot of uh, cycling jerseys. This is a, a merino wool jersey, which can withstand heat as well as cold. These are my whip shorts, all my uh, cycling paraphernalia like my pumps and my spare tubes, lights, my uh, cycling goggles. I must have spent about uh, 4,000 US dollars uh, on all the accessories. People didn't know what is a mammal that time. I think sometime in 2009, 10, that's the time when the cycling kind of 
kicked off in India. We were a small community back then. And uh, most of the people uh, who started, I mean, who got into cycling were in that age group of 35 plus who were becoming health conscious and wanted to get into cycling uh, purely for health benefits. But once you get started and uh, there is no limits, you know, uh, you start as a, you know, healthy activity, but uh, it's, it's more like a social activity now for many of us. I'm Benjamin Quack. I love cycling. It's also a social sport where you have your own club and team and you enjoy weekend rides together with a lot of friends. Joy Rider is a social club that I established 12 years ago. We have different time slots for cycling. We have even weekdays ride, night ride, morning ride. And after ride, you can you know enjoy a cup of coffee and or even a big breakfast without feeling guilty. A survey of 21 cycling clubs in Singapore revealed that the majority of riders are male. The largest of them, Joy Riders Singapore, boasts 3,000 members, 75% of whom are 40 to 60-year-old men like Benjamin. Being a mammal has reinvigorated his passion, not just for riding, but all the shopping and fashion that comes along with it. I have five beats and 50 jerseys. Initially, I wasn't very comfortable also. But after when you have all your friends wearing the same, you know, tight-looking yoga attire, you get used to it. I think we look good in Leica. A lot of people think that we wear nice jerseys and we, you know, we have a nice bike. It's very expensive, but sometimes our bike can last five to six years. And if, if you uh, uh, go to a gym as a membership, you pay much more uh, uh, than uh, what you what you do as a cyclist. So I don't I don't think it's an expensive sport. In 2008 the National Bureau of Economic Research in America published a research paper that looked at the link between ageing and well-being. Sampling data from 500,000 individuals, the paper concluded that many felt the greatest fulfilment during their youth and old age, while suffering a dip in happiness during the middle-aged years. I think most of the times it's the middle-aged crisis that happens and that's when you start looking for a hobby. Uh, you know, either cycling or something else, and that's when you get into one of these. Basically, I didn't know what to do, so bike <laughs> was sort of an outlet for us. And we started cycling. So <laughs> it's it's the middle age crisis, right? So you want to possess the expensive things and do something different, right? Car is no more a luxury. I mean, it's just a need. Takes you from place A to place B, and looking at the traffic today, you don't really feel like driving a car. So cycle gives you the health motivation and. You get the exercise, you get those adrenaline flowing. So you feel good about doing cycling. Mammals, middle-aged men in Lycra. They're not your regular uncles on bicycles. Some wonder if these cycling fanatics are trying to recapture their youth. For Benjamin, it was a personal health scare that led him down this road. You know, I go for annual checkup. Oh, everything was wrong. The blood pressure was like rocket high, sugar level was high. And you start to worry, you know, you know, your kids are young. So I started my own intervention by, you know, changing my diet drastically overnight. You know. So one day, our friend, my ex-classmate, called me to, you know, let's go cycling. So immediately, I go and buy a nice bike. So another friend of mine introduced us to like a road bike and join some teams. And immediately, when I go and invest in another bike, we were doing like every Saturday, Sunday, even weekdays at night. Then gradually, you start to become a routine. And this is a very good routine in my opinion. Satish, too, embarked on a quest to regain his health and fitness. I was weighing about 128. And then finally, I, I decided that I need to cut down and get fit. I started doing a few marathons also. And then in that process, I hurt my Achilles tendon. 
uh, and doctor said you have to rest for at least uh, three to four months. And in that period, I somehow met a guy who also cycles. And then he said, why don't you take up cycling because it doesn't uh, harm your uh, joints. It doesn't impart any shock. At first, cycling for Satish was a struggle and he wanted to give up. But as he did with his work, he dedicated himself obsessively. This is an indoor uh, training unit which is connected to the computer via Bluetooth. And I also wear a heart rate monitor. Uh, it's a heart rate band where it's strapped onto my chest. And then it, this talks to my computer again. Uh, there's an analytic which comes out uh, at the end of each ride to show whether I need to still improve on my cadence or my heart rate or my power output or whatever. When you are young, you tend to sacrifice your health for your wealth. As you age, uh, you do not want to sacrifice wealth for your health, right? So now it's really investment in, in cycling to actually help to actually boost up your, your health. Though bicycle shops are nothing new, in 2017, a mall targeting mammals opened in Singapore, the Downtown Gallery. Located in the business district, this cycling-themed lifestyle space was conceived after much research. A very good friend of mine, um, who's an avid cyclist, you know, made this comment to me that um, cycling is the new golf. So we felt that um, it, we needed to cater to the ready cashman and um, this being the CBD. So we wanted to cater to the needs of the professionals. The term that we used for, to sell the concept was that this was a habitat. It was a space where we build communities. Well, since, you know, Downtown Gallery is focused on the body, the mind, the soul, the wellness, the fitness, yes, why not? Let's look at catering to this group of people and that's where I was introduced to the term mammals. Patrina diligently gathered intel on the mammals even joining them on rides to find out what they were really into. My observation, um, they are shopaholics when it comes to, you know, stuff that are related to cycling. There's never enough in buying the accessories, you know, for their bikes. Something I notice about Marmils is that some of them who really do not bother much about dress sense when it comes to your day-to-day, -day, but when you put them behind, you know, on, on the two wheels with their bikes, they will match from top to toe. So it's, it's probably something that makes them feel powerful when they are on two wheels. The downtown gallery also integrates other retail offerings to tap on the tastes and needs of their mammal clientele. Apart from, you know, being avid cyclists, um, they are also, you know, a group of people who enjoy, you know, the finer things in life. So in downtown gallery, you know, we have tenants like the Provador, the wine cellar. Um, there's also whiskey distillery, whereby they, it's convenient for them to pick it up, you know, and on their way home. It's not uncommon to see mammals expanding their cycling lifestyle to embrace other social pursuits like cooking and travel. I want to do a, a trans-European cycling tour. But then I would need a cycle which can take all the luggage, which is strong enough. So that's why I would want to now buy a touring bike. So this is something that you can look at. This is a Marine Gestalt series. This is a gravel series, by the way. So this can be a good uh, touring bike as well, a light touring bike for you. We are a community-driven bike store. Whoever comes here, they come through references, word of mouth, and we have been focusing only on that, you know, keeping the customer happy. One happy customer can get about 10 new customers. And that's how the community has grown. I would say one thing, service. Service is something internet resellers can never replicate. It's something which is our strength and something that we are constantly working on. Serving a customer buying a $20,000 bike is extremely different. Uh, they would require someone that have a high knowledge of what they're selling with being able to identify the needs of the customers and recommending uh, products that are suitable for them. In Bangalore, mammals don't just ride for leisure. For some, it's often a daily part of their travel routine. 
I'm Arun Shankar. I'm general manager of one of the IT companies in, in Bangalore. And I'm an avid cyclist and more of a commuter. So uh, my commute is about 22 kilometers to work. Typically, I do it in about an hour's time. Well, on, the, on my car, probably the same distance would take about 45 minutes at the best to about an hour and a half on an average. And that's about three hours saved for me every time I cycle uh, to work. About 16.3 million bicycles are sold in India every year. Out of that, only 0.2% or 32,000 bikes are considered premium bikes. Though relatively small, it's still a lucrative and growing market with double-digit growth compared to regular bikes. In 2018 alone, this sector was estimated to be worth 25 million US dollars. I mean, if you look at the commuting workforce in Bangalore, a lot of them are on two-wheelers, which uh, cost you as much as a premium bike. So the more you promote cycling, the more that you get uh, these guys off uh, from a motor two-wheeler to a non-motorized cycle. Uh, so in that sense, uh, you have a market uh, potential over there. So regarding premium bikes is to look at the workforce and not just the weekend cyclists. The increasing interest in two-wheel commuting has been picked up by bike-sharing startups like Yulu, which includes Mammals in their clientele. Yulu was co-founded more than two years ago. We launched our services in January 2018. We started from Bangalore, now we are in five cities. When you talk about Mammals, these are a big part of the population of Bangalore. We use machine learning and artificial intelligence to identify demands and what we have observed over the last uh, several months is that this mammal category is the one which actually forms a, a very large chunk of our overall demand patterns. By offering a more eco-friendly alternative that alleviates traffic congestion, Yulu is targeting more of India's current and future mammal population, many of whom appreciate its green benefits. Right now, we have one and a half million app downloads overall, and we have tens of thousands of users using our products on a daily basis. We have seen double-digit growth on a month-on-month -month level, and we want to continue on this journey and making a difference. With the global bike-sharing industry projected to grow annually by 8% all the way into 2025, the future looks promising for services like Yulu. On the surface, socializing and biking define the mammal lifestyle. But it also provides an avenue to participate in meaningful causes. Besides speaking as a hobby in the, for cycling, right, we are also involved in charity work as well. At our stage, it's not really about ourselves, it's really about giving back to the society yep. and, and chipping back uh, in the form of charity or for our environment uh, is part of what we believe. The KDF Millennium Ride is an annual ride by the Epic Cyclist Group. Uh, we have an ultra distance ride of 1000 km from Thailand back to Singapore in a span of four or five days. And the purpose of the ride is to raise funds for the underprivileged patient of Kidney Dialysis Foundation. So bike events is uh, extremely important for the industry as it brings uh, cycling to the mammals. So oftentimes we see cycling being broadcast on TV, on YouTube, uh, where it's being done internationally, but bringing it to a local scene where someone could see their friends, their peers riding it, it creates this thought process that is something achievable for them, which I think is extremely important. And corporate brands have acted fast to court this affluent demographic group. Sponsors could be from a range of companies where we've seen an increase for cross-branding is car brands, for example. We see brands like Volvo and Honda. There's a brand called Skoda. For the longest time, they were the vehicle sponsor for the Trek Segafredo to the front team. Uh, it can be as simple as showcasing the latest car model which you are able to put a bike in, to even integration for these mammals, you know, from their sports lifestyle to family life. In terms of brands, of course, if the team win the Tour de France, I think there will be a huge following and people will all go crazy about the brand. If the Tour de France team use the bike 
people who want that bike will be a sought after bike. Capitalizing on their exposure in the Tour de France, Skoda launched the Karok in 2017, an SUV that targets avid cyclists. As of 2019, the model has been the biggest growth driver in the Czech car range. But it isn't enough to have accessories that provide the latest in utility and convenience. For mammals, the holy grail is being able to design and customize their bikes. People want to ride what they want. So bespoke is something that is unique, is customizable. They want to be able to choose their own parts and this is a great selection. So with Trek in the US, they have this program called Project One. Someone could come into the store, we can run through the different models with them, the different colors with them, what they want in terms of componentry, and they can get the bike in within a month straight from the US. The prices of the bespoke models, uh, while it's more expensive than the off-the-shelf bike, we're looking at roughly 12% price increase, which is not much when you're talking about getting something that is uniquely yours. For the bespoke program, we see about 5 to 7 growth annually, so we definitely see that as a growth area in the market. It's not all for show, though. One key reason why mammals splash out on anything cycling-related is due to the desire to maximise their performance. The quest to outdo themselves and fulfil the need for adventure overrides everything else. Before, uh, I used to always be, uh, you know, budget conscious, how much uh, travelling would uh, burn a hole in my pocket and stuff like that. But then uh, once cycling happened, I started touring a lot outside India. I have made a practice to see if I can mix cycling and traveling. So we, we see that there is very much a competitive streak. A lot of them do take part in triathlons and also do Ironman races. They you know, travel around the world as part of their entire fitness and wellness regime that they keep. So my conclusion about mammals is they invest a lot of time, um, efforts and money, you know, into, into the sport. Ultimately, living the mammal lifestyle is about being part of a special tribe. The world is their playground, and if brands can succeed in enhancing their experience for them, they can reap the returns.